shoot. Oh my gosh, I can't find a way to get in this building. It's so tight. <laughs> I can't go back and tell him I failed. I'm just gonna go higher and higher. There's gotta be a hole in this building. <laughs> Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to our channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House Build. If you've been watching our past few videos, you know that we've made some unbelievable, epic progress on our building. And that's all because we called in some help, guys. We called in the pros. Can you blame us? And if you've been paying attention in those videos, you probably noticed in the background this big blue tarp. This stuff has been waiting patiently for weeks for this day. What do we got? Our exterior trim package. It is time to put some lipstick on this pig. It's not a, it's not a pig. Yeah, you're right, it's pretty nice. Now look gang, we've never built a house before, so what is our inspiration gonna be for the trim details on this building? Well, two years ago when we were still back in Baton Rouge and this was just a dream, Jordan went on Fiverr, found a 3D artist in Pakistan, sent him 200 bucks, and that guy did the renderings that you've seen a show on this channel before. And that guy, he absolutely nailed it. We love the renderings he made and they fit in perfectly with the neighborhood. So if you're wondering where our inspiration came from for this building, some random dude in Pakistan. And we have a ton of exterior details we're excited to show you. Freeze boards, band boards, corner boards, door casing, window casing, two different kinds of siding, corbels, and all those details boil down to one tiny little reference point on this building. It's right up there. Let me explain. So we're going to install a band board on this building. It's gonna be a piece of trim about right here, all the way around. And it's going to delineate the board and batten siding on the downstairs from the lap siding on the upstairs. We can't put this randomly anywhere. I mean, I guess we could, but what we wanna do is make it intentional. So we want our band board that's gonna go all the way down, all the way around the building, to tie in and wrap around our deck so it looks continuous and it looks like we thought about it. So the first thing I wanna do is to pop a chalk line all the way around the building that's absolutely level and we're gonna be measuring to that chalk line all day. So the first thing I'm gonna do is extend the line from the bottom of our deck ledger out to the corner of the building. Perfect, make a mark. And now all we gotta do is project that to the other three corners of the building in a level line. So I guess I'm just gonna use the laser. Guys, I don't think this is gonna work. Number one, I feel like I'm about to fall through the roof. Number two, I don't have a roof on the other sides of the building to set my laser on. And number three, I can't even see the laser. So uh, I think I have a better idea. All right guys, we've had a YouTube channel for almost five years and I've always wanted to show you a water level. The tool we used to use to get things dead nuts level before we had lasers. And when I say we, I don't mean old guys like me, I mean the ancients, like the Egyptians who built the pyramids. The base of those things is dead flat and it's said they used a water level. I just don't know where they got the clear tubing. Let's show you how it works. You saw that we dyed it red. You can dye it the color of your choice. You even don't have to dye it, but it's a lot easier to see colored water in the clear tube than it is to see clear water in the clear tube. And as you can see, I have a little rubber cork on each end. Watch what happens when I take both corks off. This is where the magic happens. There's one and two. Now the water's gonna bounce a little bit. That's what it's supposed to do, but just hang on. If you paid attention in science class, you know exactly what's gonna happen, right? Check it out, guys, we're almost there. We're almost as flat as the pyramids are. Boom. It's gonna bounce a couple more times, but you get the idea. And the beauty of it is, I can have one guy on the corner of that building, and I can walk around the other side of the building so they don't even see me, and the water is gonna be exactly level. I've got 60 feet of tubing, way cheaper than a laser level, and I've got a hilarious story about one of these happened to me and my bud. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Let's snap a level line around this building. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you how cool this is. You ready, Rod? Yeah. All right, buddy. Remove cork. Cork removal. 
Wow. All right, I'm gonna raise mine up. Here's my line. I don't think you can see that. Yep. How you doing, Rad? Good, it's moving up a little bit. All right, I'm gonna come up a little. Yep, all right, put your Sharpie mark like on top of the line, on top of the water. All right, yeah, mine's totally stopped. Yep. Good. Perfect. Right on top. Oh yeah. Sweet. All right, recork. Recorking. <laughs> all right, bud. Now you can go to that far corner, and I'm gonna stay right here. We're gonna do the same thing two more times. Roger. Remove cork. All right. <laughs> Man, that's so cool. All right, Paul, I'm stopped. Me too, perfect, mark it. Okay. Hey, Buster, what you think about that? All right. All right, recork. Recorking. All right, guys, we've come around to the far side of the building. This is the last corner, Rad's way down there. I'm still on the original corner, and we're gonna use the water level to check a physical dimension. This beam, this ledger, we set with the laser. A lot of you may not realize it, but lasers aren't perfectly flat. The one I use, eighth inch error in like 30, 35 feet. So I'm interested to see how close this is. Oh, I dropped the cork. Cork down. <laughs> All right, bud, you stay still. I'm gonna rise it up. All right. How are you, are you, are you good? The water that, level that, stop? That's it on your side? I'm about a 16th up. The ledge is a 16th high? Yes, sir. Oh, cool, so that's the error in our laser because we know the water is perfect, right? But I'll take a 16th over 28 feet every day. Yeah, that All right, bad. bud, let's go to our line, mark it, and we're ready to pop some lines. All right. And that is the mighty water level. 60 feet of tubing at 50 cents a foot, 30 bucks. Two little corks, 54 cents each. And the food dye was three bucks. A lot cheaper than a laser level. It never needs batteries. It won't blind you in the eyes and it's customizable. So if you're ever helping your father-in-law on a project and you really want to impress him so he'll like you again, pull out one of these and maybe it'll happen for you. Isn't that right, Rad? Or you could just catch him when he falls off the roof. Dude, don't say that. <laughs> now I gotta explain that to my wife. <laughs> That, that just happened, but we weren't filming. <laughs> <laughs>
The red tube is the drain tube. We're gonna insert it in there just a little bit so we know what's in our pipe. Then all I gotta do is line up that pipe into the hole I just drilled. The next step is to install the housing and normally we would put it under the sink, but I'm afraid it would fall through just like I almost did. So I say we put it right up here, Jordan. This is the nicest thing in your house. I say we put it up there for the whole world to see. Let's do it. All right, since we put this on top of the counter, this cable won't reach. So we're simply gonna move our faucet from this side to this side where the spray hose came out. Probably what we should have done to begin with, huh, Jordan? Yeah. All right, guys, our next step, we're just gonna install our faucet in there. We're just gonna push it in with the three O-rings. Good to go. Let's pull off the little protective film. Power this thing up. Initiating activated carbon filter. Initiating pre-sediment and carbon block filter. Initiating reverse osmosis membrane filter. We're all powered up. It's going through a five minute flush. All right, it is a couple of weeks later and we have been using this thing nonstop. Jordan all the time since he lives here and I come in every now and then for a glass of water and I love the display on there. It tells you your TDS level, look at that, we're at 17 and look how fast it fills up a glass. I love that without a tank and it tastes great. So crystal clear, clean drinking water on demand. No more going to the vending machine at the grocery store, filling up those five gallon containers. No more filters for the refrigerator. And that's another thing. It would be easy to tie in your refrigerator to the system with a little T so you have RO ice. How cool would that be? And how cool is it gonna be when we finish that building, we can just move this right upstairs to the new kitchen, just like you can do if you ever move. We love the way it looks. We love the way it tastes. Head on over, waterdropfilter.com. Check them out. They're gonna hook you up with the perfect water filter for your house. All right, guys, got our line snapped on our building. Finally starting to run some trim. We're actually gonna start with the corner boards here at the bottom. I'm gonna tell you why in a minute. But what kind of trimmer are we using? Check it out. We have a whole pallet full of hardy trim. Love it, it works great here in Texas. Works well with the humidity, the heat, and everything else we have to deal with. As you can see, got a ton of sizes and two different thicknesses. And this whole pallet right here, 2,500 bucks, pretty affordable to trim out all four sides of our garage apartment build. And I'm not talking thin stuff either. We got full one inch here, right here, and the rest of it is three quarter. It's gonna look great. And we're gonna cut all this with some Diablo Hardy blades. Got a 12 inch here on the chop saw, 10 inch here on the table saw, and even one on the circular saw. And those blades weren't cheap, so if you want to help your boys out, head on over to BunkerBranding.com, score you some stud pack merch. Now let's come over here to the corner of the building and talk about corner boards. There are really three ways that I see that you can do a corner board. Way number one, you just put one on the face of the building that's the most visible, like towards the street. Your siding dies here, your siding dies in in the back. Very cool way, it's what Matt Reisinger did on his house. But here in this neighborhood, we're gonna go a little bit more traditional with the second way. The second way is still to put that piece on the front, but now you're gonna grab another piece and make an L-shaped corner board just like that. Your trim dies in there and your trim dies in here. So this way is cool, but now you've got a corner board here and then this side and they're not the same dimension. So the third way is to rip this board so each leg is the same dimension. That's the most complicated way. It's the hardest way. And of course, that's the way we're gonna do it. All right, guys, when it comes to installing our hardy board, we're gonna use a pneumatic nail gun. Now I got about seven or eight of them, but do you think I had the right one for this application? Absolutely not. So we made a run to the store this morning. Check it out, brand new Metabo finishing gun. Check it out, woo, that's gonna be awesome. And we even got stainless steel nails. It's the only way to fly, baby. Let's load this up, get our compressor going, our saws going, put up our first piece of corner board. All right, guys, we're gonna fabricate our corner boards on the ground and stick them up as a unit. Why are we doing that? It's much easier to get this corner planed out like that where my thumb is right, and put it together on the ground, put the whole thing up as one piece, rather than trying to get them lined up in the air, 20 feet in the air, like on our building. Now, if any of you are skeptical about this finish gun being able to hold this together, check this out. Now, these are stainless steel nails. Uh, Hardy recommends stainless steel or hot dip galvanized. I don't know of a finish gun that shoots hot dip galvanized. If you know of one, let me know below in the comments. And don't be confused, hot dip galvanized is not the same as galvanized. All right, that's enough for me. Boom, boom. All right, Rad, you're pretty strong. You wanna pull those apart for me? Sure. <laughs> that is no lie, guys, that is, that is on there. Yep, they're strong. That is strong. And remember, we're gonna be face nailing it to the building as well. Another thing we gotta do with this hardy board, any cut edge, whether we rip it or cut it to length, we have to prime that cut edge. So we got this cool Zinser bullseye, interior, exterior, 
This is latex. That's what they recommend. You cannot use an oil-based primer. I think we're good to go. You guys ready to put together a corner board? Do it. Let's go. go. Finally. All right, gang, all four corner boards are up on the bottom of the building. It is the next day. We were so excited when we got here this morning. See how good it looks? Jordan Rat actually ran down to the store, bought one piece of siding, and we put it up on the building right there just as a little sample. This is the, uh, what, Jordan, the texture, the cedar texture. But we're going to go smooth, but that gives us an idea of what it's going to look like. That is a 7-inch reveal. That is another thing we're kind of playing with. But it looks so cool to finally start covering up the zip. We love Huber. We love zip. But it's been a long time and we want to cover up that building as soon as we can. Our next step today is to start putting up the band boards. Check out this guy right here, an inch thick, 11 and a quarter wide, 12 feet long. All we got to do, put a scarf joint on the end. I'm all set up, got my big square on there, got my saw set at 22 and a half, the recommended angle for this hardy board. We'll cut it, prime it, put it up. Let's go, let's get started. <laughs> we'll cut it, prime it, put it up, start on our band board, let's go. That easy? That easy. This board is dead flat. Um, you just paper it and cut it. Yeah, we're gonna have to cut it out of tape that. Here, I got it. You know, it's it's way easier to take that one. Uh, For real. All right, guys, we got the band on the right side of the building done, and we we're having so much fun. We've decided to put one on the front so we could see how it looked from the street. It looks great. But while the scaffolding is set up on that other side, we decided to frame out that single bathroom window. And here it is. Check it out. Three and a half inch wide hardy. The head jam is an inch thick, and the side and the bottom jam are three quarter. It gives us this little shadow line right here. I think it's a little detail. It's going to look killer on the window and on the building. The more shadow lines, the more detail, right? And then on the back, what we did, we had some quarter inch scrap panels of Hardy. So we ripped these strips and we stapled them to the back of our frame. Does two things for us. It keeps it together so we can hoist it up the scaffold in one piece. That's always nice. But really more importantly, it's making this whole unit thicker. The whole window sticks out an inch and a quarter from the building. So by doing this, this will be flush with the window. I think it's gonna look a lot better if this were kicked back and the window were sticking out right here. You wanna try it, Jordan? Let's do it. All right, y'all head up the scaffold. I'll pass it up. All right, guys, ready for our first fit up here on the scaffold. You may be asking yourself and us, why didn't you just cut a rabbit? Well, we basically made our own rabbit because we needed the extra thickness right here because of this flange on the window. Let's try it out, boys. I got a good feeling about this. Well, it fits. Oh, man. We're tight. I can feel it. There you go, bud. <laughs> nice. Should we nail it? I think so. <laughs> all right, I bought some tile spacers so we can get the even reveal all the way around. All right, that worked pretty good. I mean, for this little window, that was the way to go. For the big windows in the front, probably a bit unwieldy. Probably do those one at a time, but definitely can use this method on the three little windows for the stairs and maybe even the back porch. We'll see. Well, let's keep punching away at this hardy trim. Looks awesome. All right, guys, we all decided we want to put up this upper corner board on the second floor right here. We've got the scaffold all ready to go. 
We want to get that corner board done because we got to figure out the freeze. We kind of want to get all our details figured out before we do the whole building. That's kind of how my brain works. I don't want to do one step until I got the next one figured out. So here's our corner board all assembled. Our roof angle is 33 degrees. We got our fence set at 33 degrees, our saw set at 33 degrees. We're going to make a cut. This is long. We're going to take that beveled cut, shove it tight against the roof, then mark our cut at the band board for our 90 degree cut. It's going to be easier to do it that way than trying to get a tape measure and measure long points, short points. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. Let's make a cut. Mark it. Okay. <laughs> Take it down. Take it down now. Okay. All right, gang. First, second story corner board. This thing weighs a ton. All right guys, up here on the scaffold, we're installing our freeze board. We got the kinks worked out on the section behind door. Now we're ready to do this side. Our detail for the freeze pretty much mimics the detail at the top of the windows. This piece overlaps this piece by a quarter of an inch so we get that nice shadow line. So what we're doing up here, we have a piece of seven and a quarter inch material, three quarter thick, and another piece of three quarter material applied to the zip. And that's gonna give us our little reveal. This is just scrap soffit material. I'm gonna pass this to Rad, he's gonna tack it up. Easy. Tight. Yes, sir. Sweet. To me, Rad. Beautiful. Let me come back a little to you. Check that out, gang. How amazing is that gonna look when it's painted? Yeah, I wanna start painting right now. All right, guys, this side of the building is almost all done, but it looks amazing. I say almost because we couldn't quite carry it to the back corner. The roofers are actually coming back next week. They're gonna put ice and water shield on the porch roof, all their counter flashing, all their through the wall flashing, and then our trim is gonna go over on top of that. That's why we didn't finish. But I gotta say, this front part looks killer. Now, would we do that again? An angled, enclosed soffit and fascia? I don't know. It was kind of a pain to pull off. The hardest part was putting up that freeze. You can't get a nail gun in there square to set the nail. We had to angle it. So you know what that means. The nail heads are sticking out. So we got up there with a nail set and had to hand drive two inch stainless steel nails and it was a pain and it looks absolutely amazing. Now you don't see that detail on very many houses and maybe there's a reason for that, but we got to learn to love it because we got to do it on the main house to match this building. And you can't even really see all those details from the street because of the angle. And really the only one who's got a good view of that is Buster. What's up Buster? <laughs> all right guys, we got the scaffold set up here on the west side of the house. This side of the house is kind of the worst. We're confined here between the new building and the existing house. We're in the mud, and this side's gonna take a little bit of time. But once we get to the front of the house on that gable end, we're gonna fly. Now, if you're new to the channel or you've been watching a while, you may have forgotten what is going on right here. What in the world is all this stuff? Well, let me show you. Inside this cover is one inch PEX. That's our water supply for the garage. This is a line set cover for our air conditioning. We put it over here to protect the PEX from the UV rays, very important. We'll pull it off obviously once the bridge is built. And it's sticking out of the building here, out of the garage, because it's gonna get supplied from the main house. The water meter is way over there, so we gotta build the house, connect it to the water, and get the water to here. But we don't have the house yet, so we gotta temporarily feed this. 
we haven't decided exactly how we're going to do that. 6.3 Romex, that's for a little emergency panel in the main house. The whole garage will be on backup generator. Figured let's run a little circuit over to the main house to power a few things over there. This big boy right here, 200 amp service for the main house. It's already hooked up to the 200 amp disconnect on the other side of the garage. All we got to do, pull it across our bridge, connect it. These two pieces of 14.3 Romex, one is for the smoke detectors. The smoke detectors in the garage, smoke detectors in the house, all have to be interconnected. So that's what that one is for. And the other one is for lights under the bridge. So we have a three-way switch in the garage, a three-way switch in the house. Either way, we got lights under the bridge. All right, guys, we're about ready to put this band up, but we got to think about this bridge. Remember, we got to tie a beam into this zip. We put blocking behind there already, flash it. So we don't want to do a lot of work now that we have to remove later in future stud pack. That's what this whole drawing is right here. We spent the last few minutes trying to figure this out so we don't have to do a lot of demo and it's gonna be clean. But that's a whole video in the future, probably a year from now or more. Make sure you stay tuned for that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put a short piece of band here with only four nails, knowing that we have to remove it later. You saw how well those stainless steel nails held, so we're only gonna put four. Then we're also gonna put a short piece of band here with four nails, knowing we gotta remove it later when we tie in the bridge. The band from here back will be permanent. Then we can side the bottom, side the top, and it'll be much easier to tie in the bridge. But for right now, let's head downstairs, start cutting some band, get this side of the building all trimmed out. All right, gang, on the small windows, trying something a little bit different. We're just building it piece by piece. We got a little bit more control this way. It tends to not move on the transport, but we're gonna see if we like this better. We figured we'd try it both ways. Putting our spacers up ahead of time with a one inch finish nail and nailing it up. The bottom's turned out really good. We got a spacer we're using, so we get a nice one eighth reveal there. Pretty sweet. Perfect. Windows, man. <laughs> Dude, that looks really good. All right, first piece of freeze on the west side. You can see we got a little pad out up there. All right. To me, little Raz, but you, all right. You're there? You're there, yes, sir. Let me get this corner and then we maybe we can push up right there where you are. Yeah. Right here, gang, this is the stuff right here, Big Stretch by Sash Co. Huge partners of ours, massive support from them throughout this entire project. And honestly, I wouldn't want any of the product on this building. What do you think about that, Dad? I mean, honestly, it is light years above everything I've ever used in my career for filling in cracks, gaps, yeah. whatever. It works beautifully, dries beautifully. It doesn't really dry, right? Right. It stays elastic, Big Stretch, right? Love it. It's the best. All right, gang, that's as far as we can go with our freeze, because remember, this detail over here behind Jordan at the shed roof, our roofers have to get in here first before us, do all their flashing, and then we're gonna work around their work. But you know what, Jordan? I was just sitting here thinking, looking at this building. I mean, check this out, right? Compared to the house I grew up in, you got fiberglass windows, cement trim attached with stainless steel nails, sealed with Sashco Big Stretch. 
How awesome is that? Then you have PVC fascia. It'll never rot. You have a synthetic roof, aluminum drip edge, and whatever gets past that is going to hit the zip. I mean, to me, it's like the perfect building. I would say bring it on Mother Nature, but the last time I said that, she brought it on. We paid the price, but <laughs> I'm loving this. All right, guys, continuing with our trim. We're on the front of the building. We got the two windows on the left done, just like the same detail as on the little ones we did over on the left-hand side. Rad's up there nailing off a quarter-inch strip to pad out the top of our freeze board. As soon as he gets to the peak, we're going to start installing the freeze board. It's looking awesome. Can't wait to see the front finished. We're starting on the lower left, the bottom corner. So I'm going to pass up my good old Bosch electronic angle finder. Man, I've had this thing almost as long as I've had Jordan. Rad, pass down the bucket, buddy. All right. All right, guys, Rad called out a number, 123.8. Our saw doesn't go to that angle, so all you do is subtract 90, 33.8. I could do that in my head, but I make mistakes, so I'd rather write it down and know I'm right than to waste a board and hauling it up there all the time. So 33.8, I like that right there. So close. All right, guys, last two pieces of freeze on the front gable end. You got that right? Oh, it's perfect. How are we looking? Absolutely perfect. I'm awesome. Tight? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Wow. It looks so cool from the street, gang. It looks unbelievable. Awesome. You're a big stretch, dude. <laughs> Some people leave a gap here so the siding can slide under there and your cuts don't have to be as precise. We're using lap siding and the only problem with that is you have a bunch of gaps. And this is perfect because guys like that love those gaps. So we're just gonna cut it tight, use some color match sealant by Sashko that matches our paint. No bugs. Sorry, yeah. buddy. Yeah, he's going to be looking for a long time. He's looking right now. This, this building's so tight, he, he's not getting in. <laughs> All right, guys, that includes most of the trim on the building. We do have the backside to do, like we told you, but we're waiting on the roofers. They'll actually be here tomorrow. They're going to install their ice and water shield on that porch roof. All their flashing, and we can apply all our trim over their flashing, get ready for siding. Speaking of siding, look what just showed up 30 minutes ago. All the board and batten for the lower half. So everything below this band board gets board and batten. Everything above it gets siding. Two colors, it's gonna look great. Jordan also ordered the fiberglass entry door for over here. It's gonna look cool, can't wait to show you that. And we got a text regarding the garage doors. They have so many details that I've never heard of on a garage door. I thought I knew a lot about garage doors. Turns out, I don't. Can't wait to see those things go in also. So our goal by the end of February is to have all the siding on this building ready for paint. And painted by the end of February. What? Painted by the end of February? Yep. Okay. Whew, we better get to work. And we can't wait to take you on the journey with us as we put all the siding on this building. That's gonna be a wrap on this video. If you're on Instagram, you can check us out at Stud Pack Official. Also, if you want some Stud Pack merch, BunkerBranding.com, they will absolutely hook you up. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Wrap some beautiful freeze boards around your like button, smash it for us, and we'll see you right here on our very next video.